Hi, I'm Steve the Missionary, and this is my best attempt at explaining Easter. Now pay very close attention. Now we're gonna open with some very good news, and that's that God exists! Yay! God made everything, and I mean everything. The things we know, the things we don't know. He even made us, and then he even made us with self-aware souls. He even made us with the ability and freedom to love, and with the purpose and destiny of loving each other and God. God is totally full and fulfilled entirely in himself, so making us to love God isn't like some sort of ego thing. That's what God wanted. More love. There's so much love. Just the surplus of love. This was an act of sheer goodness. Here's the catch. Real love requires the freedom to choose to love or the freedom to choose to not to love. Otherwise, you're just a robot. Are you starting to get it yet? And here is the bad news. When we are given the choice between loving and serving others or not loving and living for ourselves at the expense of others, we choose wrong. We can see it really obviously when we look at really big suffering like, like human trafficking. So it shouldn't take too long to look at ourselves and realize where we personally do this. Okay, so maybe you're starting to figure it out. So we have this problem. We have this God who still makes us with the ability to love and with the destiny to love God and be unified with him living forever. <laughs> And we have us who keeps running in the opposite direction as fast as we can. It's gotten so bad that we can't fix the problem ourselves. The difference between God's perfection and my imperfection are just too big. We've run so far away from God, who is life and love itself, that the only conclusion left for us is death. Forever. You'll probably be able to tell where I'm going from here. So God does something patently insane and unique. He becomes one of us. Conceived and born 100% God and 100% human. Born to a poor family, part of an oppressed people. He was born and they named him Jesus. He did a lot of cool stuff, but today I just want to fast forward to the end of the story. We tortured him to death. Now there's a lot of ways to explain the how of what happens. And actually just read chapter 4 of section 2 of this book, Mere Christianity. Read the whole book. It's really good. The gist of it is when God comes down and dies, it transforms our death. Because when something meets God, it's not God that changes. It's, it's that thing. So we sin, we die. That's the weight of sin. That's the equation. God doesn't sin. God dies. The equation's broken. The weight's been taken off of us. So Jesus dies. Day one. Day two. Day three. Suddenly his tomb is empty and he's walking around. I know you've all heard it before, but try to be surprised over once again by the statement, he rose from the dead. He rose from the dead. He rose from the dead. Not only does God exist, but he lives. And just how when our death meets God, it's changed. When our life meets God's life, it is changed. It becomes eternal. It's possible to stop running away from God now. It's possible to be free. It's possible to believe in these actions that God has done and let God turn you into his eternal daughter, his eternal son, the person we were always destined to be. I highly encourage you and invite you to do that. Okay, now I gotta go by Drano, so.